Hi guys and welcome back to Victoria's Creations. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you stick around and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Speaking of which, today's tutorial I'm going to walk you through from start to finish on creating a Mother's Day Tumblr. We're going to start off in Canva working on creating the design and finish up with pressing the tumbler and finishing out the product. If you're ready to get started, follow me to my crafting table. I'll go over with you everything that you're gonna need and then we'll get crafting. For today's project, you are going to need tumbler heat press tumbler. I use the zone brace heat resistant tape, heat resistant mat, Cricut rotary blade, scissors, heat resistant gloves, a ruler to use as a guide, pinch perfect, self healing mat and your design. Now that we have everything we need, let's get crafting. Step one, create the design. When creating my designs for my tumblers, I always begin in Canva because that's where I like to create pretty much all of my sublimation designs. To start, you're going to click on create a design. I choose custom size because I like to choose the size of my actual tumbler. Each tumbler size is different. So the best thing to do is to measure your tumblers to see exactly what size you're going to need. I use the Zone Grace tumblers. I get them from Amazon. They have worked very well for me so far and I know their measurements. So I have, I actually have a template already set up in my Canva, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how I go through my process. So for the width, you're going to type in 9.35. If you're using the same um, tumblers as I am, and actually before you do that, you should always go to inches first. Be, and this is why we do the inches first, because whatever numbers you have in here is going to change it from the pixel to the inches. So we have to change that again. So 9.35 by eight inches create the design this entire canvas is going to be your design area when you print it it will not fill up the whole page it will only be the 9.35 inches by eight inches the first thing i want to do is give our canvas a little bit of a background so i'm going to come down here to background i think i want a little bit of watercolor maybe so let's try that and you just type in what you're looking for watercolor background and to apply the background you just click on it and it will automatically fill in the entire area and you just play around with it until you find the design that you want or the background that you want. You can also go under design and take a look at their ready-made templates. Let's say you decide, oh, I really like this, but I really don't want the square and I don't want the words on there. That's not an issue. You can highlight what you don't want and then click the little trash can button and that'll take out the items that you don't want. You come across something that you click on it and it says group, just ungroup it. And then delete what you want. And if this is what you like, you can keep it. If you don't like it, you can always choose something different. Okay, so I do kind of like the background, not so much the stars and the other pieces. I'm going to highlight those and delete those and kind of keep the background. The good thing about this is as you're creating, you can change. Say I like the background right now, but once I put the rest of my design together, I may not like the background. That's not an issue. We can go through our layers and change what we don't like. I want to kind of give butterfly or add butterflies to my design. I have some already picked out. Gonna just kind of click to see which ones 
I think they look really cute on the background. Sometimes it takes me a second to clear up. Kind of like that. You can even turn them if you want. You want to give them a little kind of sideways. Can make them bigger or smaller kind of depends on just what you want how you want your design to look while it's okay for your design because we're making tumblers it's okay for your design to come off the paper this way and this way you don't really want it off the paper on the sides if you can help it because this side is going to connect to this side when we put the tumbler or put the wrap on the tumbler itself before i go any further i do want to go ahead and put um, I'm going to put mom in the center, but I want it to go up and down instead of side to side. That way you can see it when you have the cup in front of you or someone's looking at the cup, they can see the whole word mom. I'm going to go over here to text. I'm going to add my text. Make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to turn it. 90 degrees and I want to make it three inches and as you can see it's right here lined up with the five so I know one two three so I want it to go all the way to the two so I just stretch it out until it comes to the two and then I can center it up you can center it up like this or you can go to position and click center there and that'll center it up Sometimes the line in the center doesn't give you the actual center of it. And sometimes this doesn't either. It just depends on what you want. Change your font unless you like the original font that the default font that it goes to. You can also um, add, if your font has it, you can go to your font book if you're on a Mac. I'm not real sure exactly. I don't remember where you would go on the on a PC. It's been a long time since I've used a PC, but you can go to and look through and see what they have and what you want. Say I wanted to add a heart at the end of mom. I would click on here, control C to copy. I'm sorry, command C to copy. And then I'm only going to highlight the M in the word mom paste and just adjust your box so that your mom word mom is there or fits all the way into just the one box or one area stays in that three inch area kind of like that but i think it might be a little too much i want a little bit of bold so I'm going to type in the search box bold. Our other elm disappeared. And if you choose a font and it seems like no matter what, it's not going to fit in here, you can always lower. Oh, I know why it disappeared because I didn't change it back to a regular font. That's why. But you can always lower the size of your font to make it fit better.
Sergio Trendy looks really good. It's good and thick. I'm going to keep it. I think I'm going to keep that one. Center it back up because we kind of played around with it. Now that I have mom on there, I know more about what I can do with my butterflies. Maybe just making the butterflies smaller. I turn it on. Actually, this one would probably fit better over here because then it looks like it's going in the opposite direction. And sometimes that works. Sometimes having it look like it's going opposite of what you already have gives it a little bit of the look that you're wanting. I'm going to turn that one, make it a little bit smaller. Slide this one out a little bit. It's simple but sometimes simple works too now i do want to add one more thing before i wrap up this design i want to put my mom's children's names here so i'm going to add another text the final step in finishing off this design is going to be to add a text box it said I wanted to put uh, mine and my brother's names in the text or in the in the mom. So to do this and with new features, this is going to be so much easier because before when you wanted to do an offset kind of look, you had to put your text into another document in another project and do your text. And then save it as an image, re-upload it, and then give it a shadow, which gave it, gave it the offset look. Now that we have a new feature in our effects, we no longer have to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and add our names. And once I have the first name in, and I can change, we can change the font later, or the font size later. So, let's go ahead and change the font now. And I want to use the miss arrow and I go ahead and stretch this out. Kind of, here we go. Now, before I go on, I want to go ahead and change the A. Remember, if you're using your MacBook, then you just have to open up your font book, find the A. There it is. Command C. Command V to change it. Come down here to the Y. We're going to change the Y. And we're going to give the Y a heart behind it because the objective is to join all of our names together, which is also why our names are starting out with lowercase letters instead of capital letters. It will all make sense in just a moment. My last name or my first name ends with an E. And we're going to change the Y to the Y with the arrow. Not that one. This one. Command C. Command V. And that gives us our names. Now I'm going to rotate this to 90 degrees. So it's straight up and down. And then I'm going to send it over here. And I want it to be centered with the lowercase letters instead of centered with the whole thing. First, let's make the font size bigger. We're going to go with 52. I'm going to move it again. So it's a little bit more centered with the lowercase letters now go to effects and the newest effect is the outline so you're going to click on outline and you're going to change the color of the outline i'm going to change mine to white you can change it to whatever color you want click back out of there and go to the thickness and this is where you get to give it more of an offset look now you can definitely go all the way to the 200 mark I'm not going to go quite that far. I think I'm going to leave it at 140, 146. That looks good. 
Leave it at 146. I'm going to move it up just a hair. That looks a little... With this, because the first M is not lowercase, you kind of have to eyeball it a little bit. And it's however it looks best to you, or whichever way it looks best to you. Mm -hmm. A little bit of spot right there. I want to go back in and give it a little bit more thickness. So we're going to go with 168. Our design is done. To me, that is very cute. It's, it's simplistic, but elegant, I guess you could say. I just, I really like the way that, that turned out. Now, this is my mom butterfly. So at the top right here where it says mom, I'm going to change that to mom butterfly. I'm actually going to say personalized mom butterfly. Now that it's named, you can share it and download. I always download mine as PNGs and then download it to your device. I'm going to keep mine in my downloads for now just to make it easier to find. Step two, print the design. Now that you have your design downloaded onto your device, you're going to open it up. You're going to click on file and then you're going to click on if you're like me and you have more than one um, printer, you're going to want to make sure that the printer that you use for sublimation is selected. I have my sublimations um, already preset because I sublimate a lot. Make sure when you're, before you print, that you have your mirror on because we are using text. That is very important. When it prints, your text will be kind of backwards, but when you put it on your tumbler and you press it, it will come out the correct way. I always make sure that my print quality is set at best. Um, quality is automatic. My mode is Adobe RGB. I have everything set. Every time I print with these settings, the colors come out really beautiful and the tumbler comes out really beautiful. So I just have them as a preset. So all I have to do is select sublimation. Because that's all I do with this printer, that is the only preset I have for this printer. Once you have your, make sure your settings are all exactly as they want. Make sure your scale is at 100%. Sometimes mine will come up at 97%. You just change it by highlighting the numbers and typing in the 100% or the 100. The percentage sign is already there. Once you have it exactly how you want it, make sure you have your sublimation paper in your printer and make sure your printer is turned on and click print. Once your image is done printing, let it sit on the printer tray for a couple minutes to give the ink time to dry. Step three, wrap the tumbler. The first thing you want to do is trim down your images. Sometimes I use the rotary cutter and sometimes I use my scissors. I don't use the scissors or the cutters that swipe up and down because I always seem to mess up my paper and tear my designs so it's just as simple for me to take my rotary cutter and cut my design now that we have everything cut it looks like this is the side that has the white so that will be the overlapping side First thing you want to do before you put your image on your tumbler is to go ahead and wipe it off. While this did just come out of the wrapper or out of the package, it may still have dust on it, it may still have fingerprints on it. So I use just a wash rag, a clean wash rag, and I just wipe it down and try not to touch it after I wipe it down with my hands because my hands do have oils on it. Have your cup upside down. And then put your image around it also upside down because you want your image to be at the top. And I usually try to make it go 
a little bit further because the bottom has the curve to it so that's okay and you want to try to have it as even as you can this is where you need your tape and your pinch perfect this thing is a lifesaver you want to set your your cup your tumbler inside of your pinch perfect on one side and then you just close it up and you pull it tight hold it and put a piece of tape over it you can always readjust the tape that's not an issue and I usually do because usually once I get to the ends down here I've got to readjust the center pieces always hold this tight once I have a few pieces of tape on the side that just kind of holds it tight I will take and I will get a piece of my bit, my thicker um, tape, and I will put it along the seam as well. I try to keep it tight. And yes, this tape will pull up your little pieces of tape, so be careful with that. And then just kind of very tightly. Push it down just like this. My end at the bottom, I cut it in the middle, and then I take one piece of the cut and pull it tight, and then I take the other piece and kind of pull it tight, trying to keep everything in place. And I use my tweezers or or I use my little scraper that's like this, only the smaller one. I don't know exactly what I've done with it since I've used it last, but you can anything that will help kind of smooth out the air pockets because you don't want air getting inside there. So you want this as smooth out as you can. And then along the seam, move this out of the way for a second. Along the seam. You're going to take and smooth that out. And the reason why you do that is because if you don't, your air is getting trapped underneath there, and that's going to cause ghosting or the white strip. You want to do both sides. And you want to go all the way down. You can also use your fingernails if you want. My fingernails tend to bend easily, so that's usually not an option for me. Next, I take a strip of my thicker heat resistant tape and I put it about halfway on with about half of it overlapping, and then I pull it tight. Smoothing it out as I go the best I can. Most of the time my measurement is not great and I have to add a smaller piece to wrap it around the rest of the way. Not an issue. And then I just wrap it or push it in. Once I have it pushed in, I will take something. And when I see the little lumps like that, I try to smooth them out because air can get in there and cause the ghosting. I 
or the white uh, marks. And then for the bottom, I use my smaller pieces. This is the part for me, it takes a while to do this, but since I've done it, I have had success with no ghosting on the bottom. So I put it on there, I pull it tight and push it down. I repeat the same process all the way around. Push it, pull it tight and that helps smooth it out. You want it to overlap just a little bit and then pull it tight. Kind of smooth it out a little bit as you go. But at the end, once you have it all the way around, you are going to want to go through like you did on the top and smooth out any lumps that you may see because air can get trapped under there, causing the ghosting. And then you take your flat surface item and you smooth it out the best you can. We are now ready for the heat press. Step four, press your tumbler. For our P&W sublimation press, I set my time for 30 seconds and then I set my temperature for 365. This has been the good, like a good temperature and a good time for my tumblers so far. I've not had any issues with this. So to press your tumbler, you have it wrapped. You want to put your tumbler in not with a seam facing up and not with a seam facing all the way down. You want to start off with a seam facing to the front of the machine, like you're facing away from you is how I start it. And then when the timer goes off, then I know I can turn it to the seam facing towards me. And there's my two 30 second presses. And then I do the ends for 20 seconds away, 20 seconds towards, and that's both ends. I always start out with the open area going inside of the press. So I just slide the press, slide it in. Do not touch it because it is hot. This is where you really should have, and I usually just put it in with the seam away from me and then slide it in, in between these two marks. Close your press. Your temperature is going to go down because the temperature of the cup is different from the temperature of the press. Just let it do its thing when it comes back up and gets back up to the 364, 365 mark. Then it will start counting down to the 30 seconds. When it's done, it will beep, open it up, and then using your gloved hand, do not try to touch this without your um, heat resistant gloves. Turn it so the seam is facing you, slide it back in. Close it back up and it should start counting down. On occasion, the temperature may go down, but it doesn't always. Once you've hit the twice, pull your tumbler back out, turn your seam away from you. I usually put mine up to about this first knob or the second knob. Close it. I normally do not change the time on the the ends but i know that i'm only pressing this for 20 seconds instead of 30 seconds so i watch it once it gets back down to the 10 second mark i open it and i flip it and i do the same for the other side turn it towards you Close it back, take it out and flip it so that you're now on the end, to the seam away from you, still only to that second knob, 
and you're still only doing it for 20 seconds on both sides keep in mind that the tumbler is hot even with the heat pre the heat resistant gloves you're still going to feel the heat off that tumbler so be very careful with that open turn close and when it's done open it up and set it on your heat resistant mat a lot of people like doing the peak test i have found that when i'm taking this tape off the peak test is not really an option because my tape kind of takes care of the um the paper itself Fill it off. The bottom part is actually not hard to take off because your tape is together, so it's going to come off in clumps. See what I mean about it tears? Sometimes it tears it. And then come to tape here okay because one side was darker than the other side that's why you can see the seam. It wasn't a solid color all the way around. A bit of tape. But as you can see, it's sublimated really well. I don't see any ghosting around the top. Could have gotten the top a little bit, the end of it a little bit closer to the top. But it's still very hot, so <laughs> do not touch it if you can help it. But it's pretty, it's, that's a pretty crisp line on the bottom. So while it does take a little bit, when taping that bottom off, you get such a beautiful crisp line. And it looks really, really nice. I like to let mine cool completely until I can touch them with my bare hand. Once they're completely cool, I take a wet uh, washcloth, no soaps or nothing like that, just a wet washcloth, and I wipe it down to get off uh, any of the residue from the paper. Sometimes that happens. And then I seal it up or wrap it up, put the bottom piece on it, wrap it up, put it back in the box and give it to the customer or if i'm giving it as a gift as if this one is a gift to my mom then i will give it to them make sure that if you're making these to sell or to give as gifts that you let whoever the recipient know that they are to wash it before using it as well as if you're making one for yourself remember wash before you use it because you just took a solid ink turned it into a chemical and then it went right back into a solid ink again on here so you want to make sure that you clean all of that off of there before using it because you don't want to get sick and the tumbler is done well i hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial and it has inspired you to go out and create your own mother's day a tumbler for your mom or to sell if that's what you want to do. I really like how it turned out and I really like the having our names on the cup in the center. I like the fact that Canva has added that new feature for the outline because it does give it that that offset kind of look to it. I will link down below uh, Creative Fabrica which is where I got the designs for the are the butterfly images so that you can uh, get those too if you would like the font is the um 
love you font and if i can remember where i got that font from i will also link that down below i think i got it from design bundle but i will double check and link it down below for you i know that my mom will probably end up with this before mother's day because she does watch my videos hi mom and she's going to be wanting to know where her tumblr is but for those of you who like this Tumblr and would like one for yourself or to be able to give as a gift, but you don't have what you need to be able to make it, I am going to have them available in my Etsy shop and the link for that will be down below in the description as well. So remember to keep crafting your best life.